What's up ladies? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm your girl Lorna Marie and today for you we're doing a homeschool video. We're continuing this back to school series and today for you I'm bringing you 20 tips and tricks for homeschooling. These are important things that I think every homeschooler should know and this could be for a beginner or even a seasoned veteran. These are good things to reiterate and to remember as we're homeschooling throughout the year. Now if you're into this sort of video definitely consider subscribing and hitting that little bell. I do a lot of lifestyle, mommy, and organization videos here on my channel and I would just love to have you guys. Now I'm going to list everything that I'm talking about. I have a very extensive down bar. I'll have all the info for you guys down below. I have my Etsy store, my Amazon influencer link that has hundreds of products down there. All things that I've tested, tried, and loved. I'll also have my website. All that good stuff will be there for you guys. Now if you feel like depositing some positive energies, give your girl a thumbs up. I'd so appreciate it. It means the world to me when you guys leave me comments, thumbs up my videos. I just so appreciate you. Now question of the day is, do you guys have a tip you'd like to share with us for either back to school or for homeschool let us know in the comments below and without further ado if you guys want to see what my 20 tips and tricks are for homeschooling then just keep watching give you a little bit of background for people that are new here. I am a homeschooling mom of four. I have two toddlers and then I have a sixth grader and a third grader. So I'm homeschooling two and then I have two I have to entertain on the side. That can be a whole video. I've gotten questions about that. So let me know if that's something you want me to do sooner than later because it can for sure be challenging. Even challenging, it's even challenging homeschooling more than one child at once, but we seem to get it done. So I am homeschooling plus I do YouTube as my job so I feel like I have two full-time jobs really it takes many many hours to do videos and to take care of your kids so I'm a busy girl so I use a planner to stay organized and all that good stuff but I just wanted to give you a little background about how many kids I have and what I'm doing I've been homeschooling since day one since my oldest son was in kindergarten it was a choice I made I have a whole video on why I homeschool that I just did a few videos back I'm doing like I said a whole series um, for back to school on my channel so definitely uh, keep an eye out for all the future videos so today I'm going to be giving you my 20 tips and tricks but I'm not doing them in any specific order I think they're all they're all important okay so tip number one try not to have unrealistic expectations I think just in homeschool in general you can use this for so many things with homeschool like don't have unrealistic expectations on how much you're gonna enjoy it <laughs> yes the organization and like i feel like people like me who love organizing we see the attraction of organizing splitting up stuff and you know uh putting things in binders and yes i feel like for me that's the glamorous side of homeschool the unglamorous side of homeschool is teaching someone one subject that they just don't understand for over an hour that is not fun and an unrealistic expectation is you walk into this beautiful glamorous homeschool room everything is beautiful perfectly organized and then you sit down and you have to be with your kids for hours straight because I've gotten many comments from friends or whoever they're like girl why do you do this they just don't get it because they don't choose prefer to be at home with their kids so you have to be really realistic and that's why I'm saying don't have unrealistic expectations on what your homeschool is going to look like because you're going to be with their kids all day you know what I mean like when you get off of work and your kids are crying, they're hungry and all this stuff, you just have that all day long. I tell you in my video all the reasons why I homeschool, but that doesn't make homeschool easy. Or, you know, it doesn't mean that we don't have our challenging days because we totally do. So having unrealistic expectations, even about having a beautiful, clean homeschool room that I'm talking about, it's gonna get messed up. Having two toddlers around, my house is a pigsty, 24 seven. Um, I would like to think that it's clean, but it's actually not. My toddlers are pulling stuff out of the cabinets and they work together, it's like rugrats. Remember rugrats and they used to grab the little tool and like get out of their cage, their little, you know, um, playpen cage and they would go do bad things. That is my kids to the T, to the T, okay? They're like discovering and, <laughs> anyways I love them to death I have a whole toddler busy bin thing that I do with my kids while my kids are in school to keep them occupied but it is very challenging so just know yes homeschooling is fun there's great moments but also know there's some really shitty ones too you know number two tip number two know when it's not for you so a lot of people want to get home started with homeschool because of number one they have these unrealistic expectations and then when they get started they just they're miserable their kids are miserable the schoolwork's not getting done things aren't being completed and that's okay 
I don't want to sit here and criticize anybody for trying it and it not working out because it's not for everybody. Just like I stated in my Why Homeschool video, I don't think teaching is for everybody, even for the people that have credentials. Homeschooling is not for everybody, even for the people that have the heart to do it because you have to be able to get your message across, teach your children in a way that they understand and they absorb the information and they retain it. Um, there's so many factors in there. You just have to be able to know when things aren't for you. My motto that I always say is when it's not working, throw it out. I'll get into more detail about that in a little bit, but that is my ongoing thing of homeschool. And you just have to know it's not about you, it's about your kids um, and how well they're doing. If they were succeeding more in school, maybe it's better that they go to school. If you feel like it doesn't matter, it's a moral thing, then you maybe need to get some help. Have you know family members, husbands, you can hire a tutor, whatever it is, but you have to know homeschooling is about doing what's good for our children. And yes, the morals and all those things that they're not getting in school is so important, but the reason why you're homeschooling is to be able to educate them and you know teach them those values alongside together. So if you can't do that, you just have to know that homeschooling may not be for you. Number three, you have to have some sort of schedule. Now I know there's some people, I don't know, they just, they're free. You know what? Good for you. However you wanna do it, I'm not gonna tell you how you have to do it in your homeschool. I'm just gonna suggest. I suggest that every homeschool has a schedule. It doesn't have to be, like mine is like times. My kids know at this time we do this. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be more flexible. There's block scheduling. I also have blocks in the way that I schedule, but some people can just say, I complete these tasks within this certain amount of time, um, and then the next block you do these tax, tasks within the, that certain amount of time. Whatever it is, you have to give your children expectations on what they're doing, what's expected of them, and when you have blocks and times and schedules, um, your homeschool will run so much more smoothly, I promise you. I've tried both ways. When the beginning, I didn't know what to do. But um, you know, I had a little bit of a schedule, but now I know I have to follow my schedule very strict because I have other things that I wanna accomplish. I wanna cook meals, I wanna do laundry, I want to um, do YouTube and make videos. So in order for me to accomplish those things and in order for us to have free time, because when I'm off on the weekends, I'm off. I try not to work or do anything because I wanna be with my family. Those are our days off together. So in order for us to have those times where we're actually off and I'm not working around the clock, I have to have and be in my set schedule. So you have to decide what schedule works for you. There's so many different kinds. Do research on it and um, do what's best, but I promise you having a schedule is the best tip I can give you guys for your homeschool. So tip number four is if it's not working, throw it out. It's my number one motto. If you start a homeschool program or a curriculum and your kids hate it, you hate it, you've got to be able to throw it out the window because there's no point in sitting there suffering and then they're going to think, should they be in school? And then you start doubting yourself, your kids start doubting you. It's just not a good combination. So just know if you try it, it's not for you guys. Like I got a um, history and it was, the, it was one of the most popular ones. It's like, what is it called? I don't remember the name of it, but any homeschool mom that's been homeschooling for a long time, it's the one that probably you use. It's the one that a lot of people use. But I opened it and I looked at it, I was like, no. The words were tiny, I just, it just wasn't colorful, there was a lot of things, I just wasn't into it. I already knew just by opening it up, I was like, I'm not gonna like this. Because I'm a very visual person, I like things to be colorful just like kids, I guess I'm a kid when it comes to that kind of stuff, but I knew we weren't gonna be into it and I didn't wanna sit there and read a bunch of stuff because I'm already reading to them for their language arts program. So I just knew it wasn't for me, but that doesn't mean it's not for you. You have to try it and then if it doesn't work, throw it out. All right, number five, you have to figure out what type of learner your child is. Um, there's so many different tests and things you can do online. Are they auditory? You can probably tell, I mean, for the most part. If you wanna go in more in depth, there's lots of tests online you can do for your kids. Are they auditory? Um, are they hands-on? Are they? Do they have to write things out for them to absorb the information? So it's a great thing to know. If my child really wants to learn something, they need to do it, um, they need to listen to it. They're auditory learners. Whatever it is, it's good to know so that way you can know what your teaching approach will be and how they're gonna absorb the information the best. Which leads me into my number six tip. Okay, so number six, you have to know what type of teacher you are. Because in order to stay motivated throughout the year, because by the end of the year, it's really rough. And I have senioritis all over again and I'm done. So I have to stay motivated too. 
you have to find ways you like to teach that you enjoy to keep you passionate about what you're teaching. Think about any teacher you ever had and why you received the information and why it was so much fun, even if it was like a boring subject like science or something. Not that science is boring, but you know, when you're in high school, you can get a teacher that's teaching you just textbooks and work pages. Then you get another teacher that's hands-on and fun as an excited and jumping around. It's because you can feel their energies that how they feel about that subject that they're teaching. So that's all that I'm saying. Like you can teach any subject in either way, but find the way that you enjoy to teach. I enjoy presentations, oral reports, and projects. I love doing that and I love teaching my kids and it's it's honestly really good for them when they get older because if they have jobs that where they have to present or um, you know projects to do with deadlines but we love doing that I'm hands-on we like doing colors and cutting and pasting and making presentation boards so that makes me excited so in turn I'm getting excited which makes them excited and we all are having a good time so I highly suggest learning the way that you like to teach your children do you like watching a movie and doing a commentary do you like you know there's so many different things you guys can do and that's the beauty about homeschool you don't have to do it the way anybody else tells you to switch it up all right that leads me into number seven always be switching it up switch up your where you do schoolwork switch up your curriculum switch up everything this is the beauty about homeschool you can switch it up whenever you want to if you're feeling stale things are getting boring nobody's motivated switch it up you don't have to stay doing um what you don't like like i said earlier about your curriculum but also switch it up in the way you learn the, your approach the way you're doing things um you're doing math do it in a different way that you can't do in school bake something with your kids and talk about fractions baking stuff there's so many things and so many different ways that you guys can research and learn um, to switch it up in your home school and it's such a beautiful thing. You can go outside and do homeschool. You can go to the library and do homeschool. You can visit a museum, go on lots of field trips. That's the beauty about it. So definitely number seven is a good one, switching it up. All right, number eight, schedule breaks. Now, I know I already talked about sticking to a schedule, but you wanna make sure you're scheduling breaks within um, those times, especially if you have a kid, like my daughter finishes very early and it's kind of hard to tell when the breaks are. So we do our breaks with time. Um, we have our first break at 1030 and then we have our lunch at one o'clock. Like there's certain times we do things, but make sure you're scheduling the breaks even for yourself, because if you're doing things straight on, you're going to go crazy and it's going to day after day. Eventually, it's going to take a toll on you. You might seem super excited. It's like when you go back to school, you're excited and you get all your school supplies and you're ready to meet people and do things. And it's the same thing for teaching homeschool. You're going to be super excited, motivated. I'm highlighting all my stuff. I'm super organized. And then if you don't give yourself the breaks, you don't do things that you need to do for yourself, have self care and do all this. I'm going to have a whole video on that on self care. But if you don't do self care in between all of those things, you're definitely going to get unmotivated and you're going to lose passion for what you're doing. So taking a break and doing the things you need to do for yourself are so important. And scheduling breaks for your kid is also important. They need to have a break. They need to have a mind break from what they're doing so they can stay fresh all day long and keep doing all the subjects that you're requiring them to do. Okay, the next thing is have consequences and a reward system for your kids in place so they know what's expected of them, they know what the consequences are, and they know that they're going to get rewarded if they do something right. And um, I kind of go over this in my video, uh, one of my back to school videos. I'll leave the link down below. I have a back to school systems video that I do. Now I keep all of our consequences and our rewards in our playbook. I have a playbook that we use throughout our day that has all of our routines, all of our schedules, everything in this one playbook so the kids can just flip to it. But I highly suggest giving your kids consequences and rewards so they know what's expected and they can have something to strive for. I've kind of touched on this a little bit, but number 10 is thinking outside the box. You don't have to do things the way people do things in school. And you know, even testing or whatever, you know, you think your child has to take a written test in order to be compliant with the way schools are doing things. Like you can do an oral test, you can do, um, they can draw a picture and write the answers in that like just whatever it is you don't have to stick to the way everyone else is doing things and totally switch things up and do things outside of the box like i love having parties like we do like valentine's parties and all these kinds of things you can do a book party on the book that you guys are reading whatever it is definitely think outside the box number 11 don't feel like you have to do things the way the school does them that's kind of related to number 10 a lot of people feel like 
they have to do things like standardized testing and all those things because that's what everyone else is doing. Don't feel like that. My school, my homeschool, they're required to do standardized testing, which it's fine, but I probably wouldn't do it if the school didn't require them to do it. So those are choices that you have to make what's best for you guys, but don't always feel like because these kids are learning about this subject at this time, they don't have to line up. You know what I mean? It's you're their parent, you know what things you want them to learn outside of school when they grow up, so those are the most important. Don't feel like you have to do things that the school's doing. This also leads me into number 12. Teach your kids things, um, real life things that you want them to learn and take with them when they leave your home. Um, real life stuff, cooking, cleaning, finances, all of these things are so important that a lot of the school systems don't teach you. How to balance your bank account, um, how to properly clean out the car or uh, how to grocery shop and make a list. Like there's so many things that your child can learn from you um, by being a homeschooler and it counts towards homeschool time. Don't think you have to do both because during that homeschool slot that's when you're there to educate them on whatever you choose to teach them okay number 13 do not compare yourself to other homeschool moms don't compare yourself to me don't compare yourself to anyone else if you're just getting started it's okay you don't have to have all the fancy stuff the gear this and that it can be very very simple and you can still succeed um, if something isn't for you too like I said earlier don't feel like you have to do things the way another homeschooler does it just because one homeschooler is doing something um, a certain way doesn't mean you have to do it a certain way it has to feel good and resonate with you and you have to know that that's something that you're going to enjoy that your child's going to enjoy it's not going to be the same for everybody and it's so sad with social media that we go on there i do the same thing i'm so guilty and i'm just like oh i need to do more i'm not doing enough and as a homeschool mom i feel like that's one of the hardest things is feeling like you're never doing enough because people are always judging you. They're like, you homeschool? Are you accredited? Do you take a program? Blah, blah, blah. They say all these things to you and you just have to like, girl, bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't worry about me. I got this. You know what I mean? So just know it's very, very hard to do that, but it's one of the most important things you can do for yourself is not to compare yourself to other homeschool families. Number 14, come up with a homeschool mission statement. I totally did this. Um, it's in our playbook. Our kids read it all the time. It has our values, our mission, and um, our home rules. I like to have it all on one sheet of paper. I think it's so important to have one so you guys can read it and understand and everybody's on the same page about what your core values are, why you're homeschooling, what's important for them as human beings, and what why are we doing this? So they know um, that they can read that and sometimes I make them read it when they don't want to, when they get in trouble, but I think it's good for them to have a standard, um, for you to have a standard for your homeschool. Number 15, make sure you have systems and routines in place. I promise you guys, this will make your homeschool life, your life in general as a mom, even if you don't homeschool, so much easier. Um, I have a, that playbook that I developed has their morning routine, their after school routine, their evening routine, their after meal routine. I have a whole video on the after meal routine. I will link that down below for you guys, but I have everything that they need to do here because I have multiple kids I don't want them saying what do I do next what do I do next or I have to ask them did you brush your teeth did you wash your face did you clean your room blah, blah, blah. all these things I don't have to do that it's so nice to have it on the playbook in on a piece of paper my playbook tells them what the next play is and what they're what's required of them so nice for 16 do special things for your kids that they don't do at school now I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier but so one day of the week you can always make pancakes for homeschool one day of the week you can do extra fun learning lessons or you guys can cook a meal together there's so many things you can go to the park one day every single week do something that's special that other kids don't get to do I think that's really fun in homeschool but on the flip side to that this is going to be the same part do special things for your homeschool that they do also do in school so if they're doing a Valentine's party and they pass out Valentine's, you can still do that in your homeschool. You know what I mean? Your kids can make them. They can go pass them out at the park or to their friends or whatever. You can still have a little party. Even if you only have one child, you can just do a little something. I'm going to be doing my next video is going to be a under $100 a birthday party for my daughter. But it's so easy and simple. It's literally one little table, but it still makes them feel special. So there's so many things that you can do for your kids that they do at school and that they don't do at school to incorporate in your homeschool. That was a tongue twister. <laughs> Number 17, be flexible. 
This is so important because as someone who likes systems and schedules and being by the book, I am still very flexible. If we don't go on schedule for one day, yes, I'm like, hey, you're not on schedule, I let them know, but it's okay, it's not the end of the world and I just keep moving forward. I said in my last video about all of my scheduling and stuff, like if I strive for my schedule to the T and if I don't, if I hit it at least four days a week, I'm doing really good. My expectations are realistic and I know that I can only do what I can and that's all anyone can ask of you, that's all you can ask of yourself and make sure that you are flexible about the choices that you're making. If your kids are sick or if something's going on and you're feeling miserable, you're PMSing or something's going on, switch it up. Switch up the whole schedule for the day. Put a movie on and learn that way or do whatever. Do homework in bed. I do it all the time. You guys know I have like hip problems, hormonal problems, I got all those problems. So sometimes we do schoolwork in bed. Whatever it is to get your stuff done, to feel co completed, as long as you're getting stuff done, that's all that matters. As long as your children are learning, that's the most important thing. So be flexible with yourself and take it easy on yourself, you know? Okay, I don't wanna go on a rant for number 18 because I totally could, but don't care what other people think about you. When you homeschool and you're a homeschool mom, people are going to be judging you left and right. Like they're gonna be questioning your life choices. You cannot care what they think about you. It really makes me curious to see when a homeschool kid and a kid that grew up in school grow up side by side, learning and having different approaches at the way they were taught. And when they grow up to see what type of different people that they're gonna be. Hey, I know that both children can come out amazing. I know that both children can come out making bad decisions. But I also know that my kid isn't going to be less than because he was homeschooled. You know what I mean? I'm not doing a disservice to my child because they're homeschooled. And you just have to remember that. So as long as you know what your values are, what your mission is, why you're doing this, that's all that matters. So you always have to remember and tell yourself what your purpose is. And to tell those people, I almost gave the bird. <laughs> and you have to just tell those people, like, bye, get out of here. You know what I mean? Like. I've had so many people judge me on homeschooling. It's really funny. And now that I've been doing it, I've been homeschooling for a very long time. He's in the sixth grade, so I've pretty much, this is our seventh year homeschooling, um, if you count kindergarten. So if you really think about it, I've been getting judged for seven years, you know? But um, from day one, I already knew. I'm like, I'm ready for people. Like people try to come for me. It's like, I, I'm ready and I got what I need to say ready to go. So just don't care what anybody thinks about you. You know why you're doing what you're doing and that's all that matters. Okay, this is a hard one for me. Number 19, you have to find ways to stay focused and not get distracted. It is so hard sometimes to stay focused because you're at home. You wanna clean, you wanna answer emails, you wanna do all these things. But when it's time for the kids and it's time for your one-on-one -on -one lessons, you gotta stay focused. Remove all the things that don't belong there and to stay on track, whatever it may be that distracts you. Me, I wanna do stuff in my house. I wanna work on my videos. I wanna like do everything. So I have to like remove all of those things and just focus on the lessons. But if you're doing what you need to do, you're already giving yourself time, like we talked about in one of our other steps, for you to be able to get your stuff done. And if you're staying on schedule and on track, you'll be able to accomplish all of those things. Your distraction could be your cell phone, whatever it is, you just gotta remove it from the place but definitely find ways to stay focused and not be distracted number 20 my final tip and trick prep prep everything that you possibly can prep meals prep outfits prep schoolwork prep everything that you can prep your coffee prep whatever it is for yourself that you need to prep prep day bags prep diaper bags everything should be ready for your day so you don't have to think about it when you're actually in it that's when you don't accomplish things that's when you make bad decisions on food or whatever it is as long as you're prepping your homeschool is going to run so much smoother so have everything ready for your children have their books make sure they're taking their books out if they're old enough and putting them away when they're supposed to. So that way everything's lined up and ready to go to have a successful homeschool. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed my back to school video. I hope you're enjoying my back to school series because I'm enjoying it so much. It's just real life for me. This is a huge part of what I do. Um, you know, I feel like this is part of my job is being a homeschool mom. So if you can use anything I showed you here today or you find value because that's always what I am here to strive and do is add value to your life. Give your girl a thumbs up. I'd so appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for, girl? Subscribe and hit that little bell. Like I said, I'm going to list everything I can find for you down below. And don't forget to 
answer that question of the day. What's your number one back to school tip or homeschool tip and trick? Let us know in the comments. And if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. Leave me a pencil emoji and let me know that you did. When you guys watch my video all the way through, it really benefits my channel and it means the world to me. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Wash Your Girl Learner.